Hello and welcome to America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan. We all know you can't produce food to feed hungry people without water. And it takes a lot of water to feed a nation the size of the United States. Right now, I'm straddling the border between California and Arizona, about 18 miles north of Yuma, a place lucky if it gets three inches of rain a year. Yet, through an accident of nature and a powerful application of engineering and ingenuity, farmers here keep our shelves stocked with fresh produce through the long winter and a good part of the rest of the year. How do you turn a vast desert into productive farmland? Our story begins 300 miles to the north along the Colorado River, where Jason Schultz visits a modern wonder of the world. Straddling the Colorado River connecting two states, the Hoover Dam is an impressive sight. It's also a critical asset to those who live all across the American Southwest, city dwellers, farmers, and ranchers. It, it represents American determination to advance our society, to provide the basics of water and food. It, it represents the uh, determination and the ingenuity of actually building such a thing and, and constructing something that at the time seemed fantastic and impossible. Constructed over two years in the early 1930s, it took more than five million barrels of concrete to build the Hoover Dam, up to 10,000 barrels a day. Total weight, 6.6 .6 million tons. It's a piece of art, and the size and the scale is just overwhelming. It's bigger than life. Bill Berninga is the manager of dam operations. He took me on a tour. The most interesting part of the dam is a place most visitors can't even see. Deep inside the canyon walls are these huge pipes that carry water to the generators. We're inside the 50-foot diameter concrete pipe that's housing this 30-foot diameter steel penstock pipe that routes the water from Lake Mead directly to all the generators inside the Hoover Dam power plant. And you can feel the vibration from that water flowing. It's making this floor shake. And when all of the generators are, are at full power that are connected to this penstock, this whole area is definitely rocking and rolling. All of this was designed in the 1930s using slide rules and uh, built with relatively primitive tools compared to what we have today. Our next stop, the huge corridor that houses the turbines at the dam. There are 17 turbines that sit on either side of the river, downriver from the dam, generating more than 2,000 megawatts. This generator behind me is being worked on so we get a real idea of just how big it is. Each one of these plates weighs 8,000 pounds. In a few weeks, this rotor gets installed back into the generator. Not an easy task. It's 1 million pounds total. Electricity from the plant flows to Arizona, Nevada, Los Angeles, and several California cities, enough to serve 1.3 million people. And as long as there's water in Lake Mead, the dam will be able to provide electricity. And we're looking here at now the Colorado River downstream of the dam. And the surface of the river here is about 600 feet below what it is in Lake Mead behind the dam. And at this point, the water's gone through the generators, created electricity. And from here on, it continues downstream to the system of dams and canals for routing the water to the cities and agriculture. The juice generating here at the dam is impressive, but providing a consistent water flow to communities and farms downriver is the primary purpose of the Hoover Dam, not generating electricity. Constructing the power generators was actually done to pay for building the dam. The federal government put up the money to build the dam, but it was just a loan paid back by the electricity generated here. The origin of Hoover Dam relates directly to the irrigated farming along the Colorado River, basically turn of the century, last century. And the government encouraged farmers to settle. A good example of that is the Imperial Valley, California, and begin irrigated farming. The Colorado River, though, is a, a wildly seasonal river and at times would be destructive with flooding. And it became so severe that the need for some large flood control dam on the Colorado River was made clear. Likewise, during eras of drought, which we're in here today, now we've got this stored water to keep meeting all the needs downstream. And so the water comes first 
and the water is scheduled very precisely well ahead of time. It's an American icon that draws visitors from around the globe and a dam with a purpose that most folks don't even know about, a connection with agriculture hundreds of miles away.